Greetings in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's great to be with you one more time. And you know we always uh, keep bringing you fresh, tough, dynamic things uh, that the Lord continues to do at Christ Castle Miracle Ministries and uh, throughout the Miracle Ministries International Organization as a whole. And here again we are with you concerning our School of Ministry, our Institute of Ministry and Tertiary Education graduation ceremony. We have a two-year program, fantastic two-year program. I mean, it's a leadership, a lead ministerial and leadership program. And when we talk leadership, I want to tell you it's real solid, success-based, result-oriented leadership. Very important in our Institute of Ministry and Tertiary Education. We have merged tertiary education with ministry. I'm not sure if you would find that in many places, but we do it and it's absolutely astounding. We had a phenomenal graduation just this weekend and it was really fantastic. You see some of the cover shots there and I'm here with the background. We had a, a lot of stuff happening. These, uh, whatever you see here uh, depicts uh, to a fair extent uh, the quality and the standard of uh, the graduation ceremony and the school. We have done it in such a grand fashion because that's how we train the people. We train people two years intense. We have about 40 subject areas. You name the subject area and we have it the traditional um, Bible school stuff as we may say the hermeneutics and the homiletics and the theology and the Bible survey and the rest of it. And we also have marketing and management, human resource management and events coordination and quantity surveying and excellence, and professional leadership at international standards we teach leadership and management quality management the anointing the Holy Spirit the gifts of the Spirit pastoral ministry pastoral counseling I mean at a, a level that's international you would have some extracts in a short while that we have in our magazine we publish a magazine with every graduation uh, with various lecturers and comments and so on you will get a couple of them in a short while little extracts and you would hear from lecturers, from the students, the kind of impressions that they give, the comments, the feedback, and what the school offers, and the ministry, the organization as a whole. Top class, we train people across the board, people from here in Trinidad, from the region, and various countries. You will see them there, the red, the yellow, the black, the white. We have schools or affiliate schools that we have established in Guyana, in St. Vincent, in, uh, in St. Thomas, in uh, the US, various parts of the US, in Canada, and uh, we train people almost every, all these countries and other countries, England, uh, you will find people trained uh, from uh, the Miracle Ministries, Institute of Ministry and Tertiary Education in ministry at all levels. I mean, from uh, the apostolic down. We have churches in Trinidad, every denomination. We have people there in our graduation day as well, uh, from the Open Bible, the Pawi, the AME, uh, New Testament, Church of God, all over the body of Christ is a dynamic body to a large extent and God has set us in the earth for a purpose and on a united front we can do exploits and you see it there demonstrated to the various pastors we had times of ordination and uh, impartation and activation rich coming and praying and fasting preparing for this graduation for months uh, for months actually and making sure that we had Bible standard and all my children I thank God for them they were ordained on that day and we had some significant ordinations. Otherwise, you can see the shots there uh, because God has blessed us with quality people and people of international standing, not only my, my family. That's an anointing that permeates the entire ministry and the organization. And we had all of those things that I want to thank the ministers, Dr. E. Bellamy, uh, Bishop E. Bellamy playing such a critical role and the various pastors and ministers, you know, from the various churches and denominations locally and abroad. It was a fantastic time. God is continuing to do great great things among us we also had the miracle ministries pentecostal high school we had our graduation ceremony there and that was a amazing thing it is standard 
We always have this kind of standard day at the school. Those of you at the school, you know what I'm talking about. And you know what a fantastic, phenomenal experience it is to be there. The standard, the quality. You see it there at the American Ministries High School. Not only the facade, if you want to call it that, of the graduation, but also the standard of the education, the academic standards. We have the early childhood, the early childhood center, early childhood center. All my children came to that early childhood center. They went to our high school. That's why they could accomplish like they have accomplished. And I'm saying that humbly, but definitely so. If they had gone to any other institution, and many people say that all the time, they will never be that great and that good. And we want to thank God for all that he has done and what he's continued to do in all our educational programs. And we have various crash programs that we offer and developmental discipleship programs or discipleship church development family programs. We have Family Friday, which is once a month on that Friday. We have Super Sunday. Then we have another one introduced that we call Surprise Sunday. It will be, I mean, we just have everything by the grace of God, the youth development fantastic youth ministry and the potential of youth coming out. We, when you see the award, we award about a hundred different areas. Everybody in that school got award for different things. We look at the personality, we look at the character, we look at uh, the, the entrepreneurial skills. We teach business and we set them in business. By the time you finish the school, we have several people who are awarded for getting into business. We have family uh, situation, training people in families, in school with respect to the achievement in the high school. In a tertiary level, we have uh, creativity in the arts, various arts, theatrical skills, music skills of various types. All those things are awarded on graduation. They're coming out of the Institute of Ministry with certification. And a number of different areas, you call an area, we train people in a holistic way. When you read the comments, practically every comment of every student in the magazine talks about that holistic uh, development. And uh, in our graduation, we had those people um, doing uh, various items and so and skills. They were demonstrating their skills in music. And we also had uh, one of our students there. And as you look at her, you'll see a white girl on the pan and coming out of the school as well. School of Ministry on the pan. You see her playing there. One of my daughters, Victrina, was the, the valedictorian. And we'll give you a little extract of what she said. She had that place upside down. Dr. Emilami was there and various pastors, when he went up to speak, he said, listen, I will definitely be using that. I'm writing a book on relating to your pastor and accepting your pastor leadership. And he said, I'm telling you, uh, copyright or not, I'm definitely using the tracks of that and you will see it. <laughs> it was really, really fantastic and God is good. Let me tell you something. God is doing something today and we say it again and again. Sometimes we say it so often, it appears to be of mere cliche value. But this is substance, it's sound. And what you are seeing happening today is a transformation. And people who are there at Christ Castle, you see what is happening. And our prayer services, our miracle services, out of this world, out of this world. It's amazing, like we have never seen it before. And you can experience it for yourself. And the intercessory meetings and so on, phenomenal. Just absolutely amazing. And people are challenged to a level like they have never seen it before. And the involvement, the participation, the growth, the expansion, all wrong. Holistic is the word. This is your time to be part of something that is absolutely great and grand. And you can call in to be part of the school. It's a two-year program. Leadership solid if you are serious about ministry because the discipline is strict. It's as a high standard of excellence. It's stress there. And if you're coming for excellence and you're serious, you can call in and you can be a part of this class. But we have a limited space and we don't go very big although we have a sizable number because we want to make sure that we give people quality stuff and uh, of course follow certain professional dynamics with respect to human development and educational development and ministry development in that way. We spread ourselves too big and, and too thin, it will not be as effective. This is God's time for you and uh, a special, special miracle awaits you. This is part one, we'll also be having a part two, all right? And uh, so make sure that you get in on everything. So at this point, we come to a very significant highlight. From among the graduates, we have a student who would represent as valedictorian. She has been quite outstanding in the school. Well, of course, we expected that by the grace of God because she has proven herself quite scholarly and, above all, very committed, anointed from 
I've been born in church and grew up in church, extremely committed, and has been scholarly from day one. National scholarship winner, Caribbean top 10, award-winning law student, and we could go on and on. She also went through the two years of the Institute of Ministry here, as rigorous as it can come, and did not miss one single class. We have a few other students who did that, and that's the first time in the history of the school that we have had this, about 26 years or so. And this student is one of those, despite pursuing a very tough and rough law program, London University law program. She was also the class manager and did a fantastic work managing the class and managing the, the school over the, the two years there. So we want to invite a young lady, Victrina Coffey. <laughs> Master of Ceremonies, Reverend Dr. Winston Coffey, and Pastor Angela Coffey, specially invited guests, ministers of the gospel, lecturers of this institute, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, members of the media, other friends and well-wishers, and of course, the precious children that are among us. A pleasant afternoon to you. I'm indeed honored, blessed, and certainly humbled to represent these brilliant, radiant, and illustrious students of this class of 2015. Come on, don't they look gorgeous today? <laughs> As you are well aware, the graduates come from different denominational churches from the country and around the region as well. Now let's get down to business. Sharpened to make it happen. Oh, what a theme. Just one glance at this theme, and I wonder if it were possible at all, if we could get it any better than this. Now listen. The very first word in this theme, sharpened, taken in the self-evident context, readily brings to mind one resounding phrase, cutting edge. If we must make it happen, or in other words, effectively bring dreams and visions to reality. The cutting edge is an indispensable imperative. We just have to be spiritually sharp, mentally sharp, financially sharp, intellectually sharp, technologically sharp, sharp in wisdom, sharp in knowledge, sharp in discernment, sharp in love, sharp, sharp, sharp in the Holy Ghost and power. Given the fierce, formidable, and abominable challenges we face in a world virtually submerged in a sewer of moral, psychosocial, socio-political, socio-economic, and of course, spiritual decadence, the whole ocean of appalling dysfunction, we simply have no choice but to be the sharp. The paradigm is poisoned. The time is blind. The task is terrible. The challenge is chilling. The atmosphere is packed with fear, but I want to remind you that the Prince of Peace is here. That's good news. Isn't that good news? Yeah. I'm not hearing you. Isn't that good news? Yeah. Good. <laughs> the battle is intimidating, but the victory is certain. That's reason for celebrating, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, we are destined to win. That's the beauty of cutting edge trajectory. The term cutting edge resonates as meaning the latest and most proficient in efficacy and productivity. It's the most dynamic in up-to-date tools, methodology, strategy, technology, or theology. Proverbs chapter 24 verse three calls it keeping abreast of the facts. Since we are in the technology-driven paradigm, I may seek the assistance of this dynamic to crystallize my point. Cutting-edge technology in communication devices, for example, may mean the latest iPhone, the iPhone 6 or the iPhone 6 Plus. 
Another expression used to represent the cutting edge with the nuances of semantics as this pertains to the subliminal in the world of market share rivalry, for instance, is the state of the art. Of course, we are familiar with that expression, right? State of the art. Mind you, this tagline can also transcend the disingenuous and indeed mirror the authentic. State of the art or tomorrow's technology today. You know how they say it. It's only a rose by another name or half a dozen and six. The late apostle Bertrand Baird, who has been a lifetime mentor of the founder and CEO of Miracle Ministries and founder and president of the Miracle Ministries Institute of Ministry and Tertiary Education, Reverend Dr. Winston Coffey said, and hear this, hear this well. God gave Dr. Coffey a vision. He embraced the vision to secure the future by inventing it. Did you hear that? Wow, isn't that amazing? He says Dr. Coffey is a visionary who invents the future. Sounds to me like Pastor Coffey is not one who merely watches what happens, wonders what happens, or waits for things to happen. But Dr. Coffey, with capable adept help me, Pastor Angela Coffey at his side, makes things happen for the glory of God and the good of mankind and on this planet. Come on, do you believe that? Do you believe that? I'm not hearing you. Do you believe that? If you really do believe that our pastors, Pastor Dr. Winston Coffey and Pastor Angela Coffey are visionary leaders who not only make things happen, but keep things happening. Let me hear you shout. Let me hear those hands clap. Come on, graduate, shout, clap. Say yeah. <laughs> That's right. We have been trained under this cutting edge, make it happen, future now, kingdom now, anointing. Yes, that's what the making it happen, cutting edge anointing is all about. It's a future now anointing. Yes, in fact, the Holy Ghost is a future now Holy Ghost. The Bible tells us he will not only wait until we get to the future to see the future, but right now, he will show us things to come. That means the Holy Spirit brings the future in the now. The Apostle Peter calls it established in the present truth. And that's exactly what our intense, loaded, relevant, paradigm-centered, and above all, spirit-led training in this institution has been all about. In the spirit and anointing of a president, his spouse and staff, and certainly Christ himself, we have been sharpened to make it happen. Let's repeat that. Come on. We have been sharpened to make it happen. Great. And what was that major sharpening tool of the Holy Spirit? You may have already gotten it right. The sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. That's right, we have been shaped and sharpened by the word of God. And hear this, the word is sharper. I say sharper. Remember, we have been sharpened and this word is sharper than any two-edged sword. That means this word is sharper than the sharpest, sharper than any two-edged sword. Now watch this and follow this with me. Don't miss it earlier. <laughs> if you have been sharpened by sharper than the sharpest, then what kind of sharp are you? Wow, wow, wow. Imagine that. What kind of sharp are you? Tell somebody, what kind of sharp are we? We cutting down every devil. We cutting down every obstacle. We cutting down every barrier. We serve notice on every devil that the gates of hell will never prevail as we cut, cut, cut to make it happen. 
We are the head and not the tail. We don't have anything to do with tail, so we cut the tail. <laughs> When Moses dropped the rod and turned it into a snake, he grabbed it by the tail. This means that we have dominion over the tail. He pulled the tail, so he hauled the tail. <laughs> pulling, <laughs> pulling is hauling. So what do you think he was doing? He was telling the devil, haul your tail and get out from here. When the Bible say to tell the devil, get the hands, what do you think Jesus is trying to tell us? Tell the devil, haul your tail. <laughs> so wait now, all you feel is all your grandmother who make up hauling your tail when she chasing you out the house from harassing her. No, it's Moses who make up hauling your tail. What's wrong with all you? Come on, somebody, tell your neighbor, tell the devil, haul your tail. The sons of the prophets had to cut down something to build up something. And watch this. This is a particularly important point. Or yes, the prophets had to cut down some trees to build up a dwelling place. We call this the cutting down to build up principle. You see, you have to know how to use your cutting edge. And we, as it were, are the young prophets of our Elishas today and our pastors and other leaders of today will have to build up the kingdom. In order to build up the kingdom, we will have to cut down or tear down some things. And if our axe heads fall off in the water, we have our prophets to cut. Say cut. Yes, our prophets will cut a branch off and have the axe head swim again. That cutting, which the prophet does, means that even if you have lost your cutting edge, just like Elisha, your prophet, your pastor, your covering will have his or her cutting edge. And when you can't cut, he or she will cut for you, just like Elisha cut that branch and threw it in the water until you can recover your own cutting edge and cut again to recover the axe head. That's a cutting edge principle. That's why, no matter how many distinctions, awards, or ordination we graduate with today, our greatest wisdom will be that we will always need the cutting edge of a spiritual covering. And mind you, there will always be that time when you will be entirely without your weapon dangerously vulnerable and exposed to the deadly snares of the enemy. And if you do not have your covering to cut or cover for you, to stand in the gap like Moses between the living and the dead, or like Elisha with Gehazi praying, Lord, open his eyes that he may see. And again, this is important graduates. Too many people fall through the cracks here. I pray God that we never reach that place of fatal fallacy where we may feel or say, our cutting edge is sharper than our mentors and I don't need him or her to make it happen. And now, with our cutting edge mission and mandate, on behalf of my fellow graduates, I want to announce that we are going up to the high places and what are we going to do? Somebody help me. Can you tell me what are we going to do? We're going to tear the devil's kingdom down, down, down. <laughs> and how are we going to do that? With a super sharp cutting edge, we're going to cut down to build up. Come on, graduates. We're going to cut down to build up. Our Lord says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not, and I repeat, shall not prevail against it. Surely he has come to build, but remember, 
Remember, he also says in this context of warfare that he came not to bring peace, but a sword. Sword speaks about serious cutting edge. That means in his building up, our Lord will be cutting down, pulling down, and we are laborers together with him. So if he cut in, we cut in too. We cut in to make it happen. The kingdom suffered violence, but the violent take it. We take it. We take it by force. This is force time. We are God's defense force, armed with God's cutting edge sword, and set for the defense of the gospel. A cutting edge factor, which will certainly resonate with the class of 2015 and the general tenets of this institute as a whole, is that revelation loaded line from the wise King Solomon. Iron sharpens iron, and one man sharpens another. What's this special resonating revelation? Well, iron sharpens iron by some interesting means. They are, number one, pressure. You must apply pressure on that file in order to sharpen the knife or cutlass. Number two, friction or grinding. When that pressure is applied on that file and the rubbing is engaged, there is the presence of tremendous friction. And it might be rubbing somebody or something in the wrong way. And of course, the grinding, the crushing in a certain context. Number three, cutting. With the rubbing, there's the cutting away of excess blunting iron to shape that super sharp cutting edge. And lastly, heat. When all of the above takes place, there is the generation of heat. Heat is synonymous with fire. Bring me gold tried with fire. Just think about these four elements, pressure, friction or grinding, cutting, and heat. Does that bring your mind a little bit to what we face during this course? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Especially the more recent months when we were very sure that the statement made to us at the beginning of this course, we have brought you in this class to kill you. This was a very serious and literal one, and I personally can attest to that. <laughs> Just reflect a bit and see if every one of those four cruel, pain-inflicting, sharpening things didn't plague you like a deadly killer bee. Wait a second, believe. <laughs> wow, killer bee friction, killer bee heat. Yes, we had it all. And what does that mean? All four types of pain form the process of sharpening, the process of developing that super cutting edge. So the fact that you faced the pressures and the pains and you endured the hardness means that all those stuff, all the excess weight that was blunting your blade, yes, blunting your blade, have been cut away and you have that ultra razor sharp cutting edge to move out, face any challenge with radically bold confidence and just Make things happen. Make things happen. Make things happen. <laughs> Fulfilling the mandate and the mission. Razor sharpen. Making it happen. We're going to pray and make it happen. We're going to fast and make it happen. We're going to love and make it happen. We're going to give and make it happen. We're going to pull down principalities and powers to make it happen. And lastly, and I want you all to say it with me, we're going to declare war and make it happen. Come on, let's say it. We're going to declare war. This side, we're going to declare war and make it happen. This side, I'm sure we can do better than them. We're going to what? We're going to, yes, yes, Dr. Ibarami. <laughs> We're going to declare war and make it happen. Come on, put your hands together for Jesus. Thank you very much, and may God continue to bless you richly.